हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ग्लोबल ऑनलाइन यूनिवर्सिटी आई होप योर प्रिपरेशन फॉर एन टी एच जी सी नेट एंड सेट एग्जामिनेशन इज गोइंग वेल एंड टू एड योर प्रिपरेशन वी हैव डिसाइडेड दैट वी लॉन्च ए मॉक टेस्ट फॉर टीचिंग एप्टीट्यूड पेपर वन सो दिस मॉक टेस्ट इज लाइव ऑन आवर वेबसाइट वेर यू कैन गिव दिस मॉक टेस्ट एट वेरी अफोर्डेबल प्राइस and uh, i will be i will also be uploading the videos of this mock test where you will have 50 questions and this mock test should help you assess your preparation so if you are uh, doing good in this mock test uh, you uh, can uh, say that your preparation is uh, is in the right direction and if your uh, score is not good then you can uh, change uh, the way you are uh, studying now for more online resources as i said uh, you can give mock test on our website link for which is given in the description and you can also order the teaching aptitude paper 1 books uh, links for uh, that also is given in the description the, now let us see the rules for the uh, rules are simple pause the question when it appears on your screen and try to answer there are two marks for the correct answers i have avoided negative marking and friends this exam exam is of 100 marks if you are getting 80 and above you are outstanding all you need is simple revision if you are getting 60 and above then your score is good but you need to work little uh, on your uh, topics which you are lagging behind and if your score is 40 and above then uh, you have to bring it to 60 because uh, that is a minimum requirement i'm i'm saying it minimum because that will uh, take the load out of your subject uh, you don't have to score more on your subject if your score in paper 1 is good your you can have that uh, luxury of scoring less in your subject otherwise if your score is 40 in your teaching aptitude paper you have to score more in subject paper so friends uh, moving on to the first question If a majority of students in your class are weak you should the options are not care about the intelligent student keep your speed of teaching fast so that student compre comprehension level may increase c keep your teaching slow keep your teaching slow along with some extra guidance to the bright pupils so friends when your majority of uh, your uh, students are weak you will teach slowly with uh, some extra care for the bright pupils so friends the correct answer is keep your teaching slow along with some extra guidance to the bright pupils hope you have answered this correctly moving on to the second question so second question is a teacher who is not able to draw the attention of his students should options are a evaluate his teaching method and improve upon it b resign from the post c find the fault in his pupils and they start dictating so friends uh, the correct answer for a teacher who is not able to draw attention of his student should be he, he should evaluate his own self and uh, try to find out shortcomings and then improve upon it so the correct answer is evaluate his teaching method and improve upon it moving on to the third question if some of your pupils misbehave with you in the college campus you must now friends Uh, the and questions sorry options are they report to the principal report to the parents c improve their behavior by your own character and scholarship and d mobilize other teacher against the guys so friends the uh, a good teacher is example by his own character so the correct answer is improve their behavior by his own character and scholarship so friends you may uh, ask uh, like uh, why not report to the principal why not report to the parent so these are you cannot uh, as a teacher you cannot go for the drastic solutions see if you go to the principal there may be a as a harsh action, action on the students so here uh, as a teacher you should be a moderate and you should, your action should not be the like they should not be harsh so your aim should be to correct the students and not to destroy their future or uh, or to uh, act in a such a way that which will be harmful or which will be detrimental to the their progress so the correct answer is you will try to improve their behavior by your own character okay now moving on to the next question 
If a backbencher are always talking in the classroom, a teacher should. So options are a. Let them do what they are doing. B. Punish them. C. Ask them to sit on the front bench. And none of the above. So friends, this teaching aptitude uh, questions, you may find that three, four uh, out of three, four, two answers correct. But uh, upon <coughs> based, uh, sorry, the, uh, among the answers, you have to find the correct answers. The best possible option that you have to choose. So you may uh, argue that uh, this option A is correct, option B is correct, or option C is. But you should uh, give the most probable answer. So the most probable answer in this question is you can simply ask them to sit on the front benches. We have seen the uh, student when it is he is on the front bench, like it is. Uh, most of the student don't talk when they are on the front bench. So the correct answer is. C. Ask them to sit on the front bench. Moving on to the fifth question. Listening to a lecture. So friends, listening to the lecture is a information listening. So types of listenings are there. So listening to the lecture is information listening. Now moving on to the next question. Teaching on TV is superior to the classroom instruction because now friends, you some of you may argue that uh, the classroom. Instruction is better than the TV. So friends, uh, the, that may be the case. But here you have given a situation that TV is a superior to the classroom in what ways? Now option A is very large classes are made possible and thus it is economically advantageous. This is correct because uh, when you you know the you want take an example of YouTube. If I am teaching a class. Uh, hardly I can teach a 50 or 100 people, but this video based on you can uh, see the views. Uh, there may be a thousand views, sometimes uh, <coughs> 10,000 views, sometimes lakhs views. So uh, only a simple video is uh, reaching to the lakhs of students. So it is economically advantageous. Now B. Experts from the teaching. A difficult topic can be arranged and others can be benefited from them. So friends, this is also a uh, correct answer as uh, for uh, TV teaching, you don't have uh, to go to the classroom. If uh, someone is sitting in their office in Delhi, he can teach to the students of uh, Chennai. Some, uh, and other way, someone is sitting in Delhi, uh, Chennai and he can also teach to the students of Delhi. So this is correct. Teaching a uh, teaching material can be filmed for you uh, reuse. So this is also correct. You can uh, <coughs> reuse this material because it is already recorded. So the correct answer is all of these. So the correct answer for this question is all of these. Now moving on to the seventh question. Listening <coughs> listening is badly affected by message overload, excess of listened material, high speed of speaking. Yeah, this is correct. A sizable hearing loss, physiological problem. This is also correct. So the correct answer is all of the above. Eighth question is which of the following method of the communication is the most effective? So friends, they have asked the most effective method of the communication. The options are presenting the written material, B presenting the written material along with film projector and C multimedia method and cannot be determined. So the friends among these, the C is the C that is multimedia method, uh, multi, multimedia like uh, uh, you can have PowerPoint, you can have uh, videos and uh, different graphics. So this is the most effective method of the teaching. So friends, uh, I hope you have answered it correctly. Moving on to the next question, which of the following is the most important single factor in underlying the success of beginning as a teacher. So the uh, Fred, the correct answer for this is of the four options is the personality and its ability to relate to the class and to the pupils. So I hope you have answered it correctly. Moving on to the next question. Now these questions are from the higher education system and uh, they have asked with reference to higher education system UGC stands for so UGC as we all know it stands for University Grant Commission with reference to institutes in higher education NCRI stands for so friends this is important because this is uh, somewhat out of uh, this thing question because uh, national now let's see what are the options. Uh, options is National Council of Rural Institute, National Committee of Rural Institute and National Council of Research Institute 
and D none. So generally we uh, tend to <coughs> go for research but uh, this is not a national council of uh, research institute. It is national council of rural institute and its headquarter is in Hyderabad. So correct option is A. National council of rural institute. Now moving on to the next question. With reference to institute in higher education, ICHR stands for the option A is Indian Committee of Historical Research, B International Council of Historical Research, C Indian <coughs> Council of Historical Research, and D is Indian Council of Human Research. So, friends, this is the correct option for ICHR is Indian Council of Historical Research. So, the correct option is C. Hope you have guessed it correctly. Now, moving on to the next. Question with reference to institute in higher education, ICPR stands for Indian Council of Physi Philosophical Research, Indian Council of Physiological Research, International Council of Philosophical <coughs> Research and D International Council of Physiological Research. So correct option friends for this is A Indian Council of Philosophical Research. Now moving on to the next question. With reference to institute in higher education, ICSSR stands for Indian Council of Space Re Science and Research, B International Council of Social Science and Research, C Indian Council of Social Science and Research and D in International Council of Space Science and Research. So friends, correct answer for this is Indian Council of social science and research that is option c is the correct option for this the 15th question is with reference to publication of book isbn stands for so friend isbn uh, as you have seen uh, you might have seen on the back of the book there will be one isbn number so this isbn number is an international standard book number with reference to the publication of book nbt stands for so as we as we have seen in the last question the isbn is international uh, uh, <coughs> book number but a indian agency which maintains the books are see this is national book trust nbt stands for what nbt stands for national book trust this also is a <coughs> b option now moving on to the next question with reference to autonomous organizations of government of india csir stand for so option a is Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. Option B is Committee of Scientific and Industrial Research. Option C is Council of Space and Industrial Research. Option D is Committee of Space and Industrial Research. So CSIR friends stands for Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. So it is autonomous R&D organization of uh, government of India. <coughs> and the correct answer is A. Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. Now moving on to the next question. With reference to autonomous organization of government of India is NCERT stands for. So friend NCERT uh, <coughs> devises the curriculum for CBSC and uh, other boards. Now <coughs> the long form of NCERT is National Council of Educational Research and Training. So the correct option is National Council of Educational Research and Training. I hope you have guessed it correctly. A is the correct answer, not other B, C, D are not the correct answer. It is not teaching, it is training only. So, correct answer is A. Now, moving on to the next question. With reference to autonomous organization of government of India, KVS stands for. So, the KVS uh, friends uh, stands for what? It stands for option A, that is Kendriya Vidyalaya Sangathan. Remember friends, it stands for Kendriya Vidyalaya Sangathan. The correct answer is <coughs> answer A, option A. Okay friends, moving on to the next question for the And the 20th question is with reference to computer network WAN, WAN stands for. So friends, this question is from information and communication technology. And the correct answer for the WAN, it stands for Wide Area Network. It is a wide area network is a telecommunication network or computer network that extends over a large geographical area. This large geographical area can be a global area or a national area or a state area. So the, this is wide area network. Now next question with reference to computer network 
LAN stands for. So LAN stands for option A is local administrative network, local area network, C logical administrative network, D logical area network. So the correct answer for this question is local area network. So friends, what is a low, uh, LAN? It is local area network is a computer network that interconnects computer within a limited area such as residence, school, laboratory, university campus or office building. Please remember the difference between the local area network and wide area network. Now the next question for today is with reference to computer network PAN, PAN stands for personal option A is personal administrative network option B is personal area network option C is people's ad administrative network option D is people's area network so the correct answer for this MCQ is personal area network so friends personal area network is a computer network used for data transmission remember this personal area network is used for data transmission so <coughs> among the devices such as computers, telephones, tablet and personal digital assistant. So friend, uh, the simple example of personal area network is a Bluetooth. Bluetooth from your phone you can uh, send data to the other phones. That is an range you see range is very limited in personal area network. Hope you have cleared. Now next question. With reference to computer area network, MAN, M-A-N stands for Middle Administrative Network, Metropolitan Area Network, Metro Politan administrative network middle area network so friend the correct answer for this man is metropolitan area network so the metropolitan area network is a computer network that interconnects user with computer resources in geographic area region larger than that covered by the LAN and smaller than that of wide area network so friends remember this very important difference it is <coughs> larger than LAN and the smaller than WAN that is wide area network so this will be helpful for you 24th question is with reference to computer network CAN CAN stands for so friends the CAN stands for campus area network remember this this type of uh, different types of network like a CAN LAN WAN and man so uh, these are the different uh, types of network one question uh, like uh, there is a probability or there is a possibility of uh, one question from this uh, area networks is now moving on to the 25th question so th they have asked the long form of the UNEP so this is from the people and environment 25th question I have taken from the people and environment and uh, the correct answer for uh, this UNEP long form is United Nations Environmental Program. So, uh, so friend, I hope you have answered it correctly. And uh, this is the further reading. The United Nations Environment Program is an agency of United Nations and coordinates in its environmental activities assisting developing countries in implementing environmentally sound policies and practices. Moving on to the next question. With reference to Environmental Protection Agency, SACEP stands for Option A, South Africa Cooperative Environment Program Option B, South Asia Cooperative Environment Program Option C, South Asia Cooperative Environment Plan Option D, South Africa Cooperative Environment Plan So the correct answer for this is B, South Asia Cooperative Environment Program So you can read it here, South Asia Cooperative Environment Program is founded in 1982 by South Asian governments to promote the uh, environment in the region. Now moving on to the next question. With reference to Environment Protection Agency, UNCED stands for. So <coughs> option A is United Nations Committee on Envir Environment and Development. Option B United Nations Committee on Earth and Development. Option C United Nations Conference on Earth and Development. And option D is United Nations Conference on Environment and Development. So the friends correct answer for this question is D. United Nations Conference on Environment and Development. So the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development is also known as Rio de Janeiro Earth Summit. <coughs> the Rio Summit, the Rio Conference and the Earth Summit. And it was a major United Nations Conference held in Rio de Janeiro from 3rd to 14th June 1992 so friends remember UNCED now moving on to the next question 
with reference to Environmental Protection Agency GEF stands for Group Environment Facility, option B Green Environment Facility, C Ground Environment Facility, D Global Environment Facility. So the correct answer for this question is Global Environment Facility. Uh, the Global Environment Facility was established on the eve of uh, 1992 uh, that Rio Janeiro Summit. <coughs> now friends moving on to the next question. With reference to Environmental Protection Agency FSI stands for Forest Survey of India, First Survey of India, Fisheries Survey of India and Fire Survey of India. So the correct answer for this question is Forest Survey of India. So friends, uh, Forest Survey of India is Indian organization under Ministry of Environment and Forest Government of India and its principal mandate is to conduct survey and assessment of forest resources in our country. So friends, this was it for today's lecture. I hope you have liked it. If you have liked it, please subscribe to Global London University. Thank you. The 13th question is, what is the main purpose of punishment to the students? So the friends, the main purpose of punishment to the students or to anyone for that matter is to reform the offender. So the correct answer for this uh, question is to reform the offender. Next question. Dash dash is the quality of a good teacher. Now, to control over the emotions, good command over the subject, physical strength and sense of humor. So, the correct answer is a good command over the subject. If a teacher has a good command over subject, he will teach it fluently. He will teach it with confidence. If you don't have command over subject, then everything else is uh, useless. Now, the correct answer here is the good command over the subject. I hope you have answered this correctly. Moving on to the third question. On which list the education is in in the Indian constitution? So there, you, as you know, there are three lists of the subject where central list is dealt exclusively by center and state list is dealt exclusively by state. And concurrent list is a list where you have both state and center have almost equal say with say center having an upper hand. Now the education is placed in the concurrent list of the uh, constitution. So friend uh, remember this, so this is memory based question you have to remember that education is in concurrent list of the Indian constitution. Now moving on to the next question, you, you want to ensure participation of more students in the class, which of the following method of teaching would you adopt? So, for participation of more students, what one has to do, it not a recitation will not, it will not be a participation, demonstration also will not be, uh, you will not have more participation. When you have discussion, you will have more participation of the students. Students can exchange their views amongst themselves with you, you can have, you can exchange your views with students. So this way the more participation, the more students will participate. So discussion is the way to increase the participation. Remember this, hope you have answered it correctly. I'm moving on to the next question. So next question is to make learning effective, a goal must be meaningful in terms of uh, option is A, objective of the curriculum, B, intellectual ideas, C, standards of others. So C can be eliminated because standards of others cannot make the learning effective. If you have uh, standards of other uh, is a goal then you cannot make it now intellectual ideas is it is for a research if you want uh, a research effective you should have more uh, intellectual ideas so that also cannot be uh, can be eliminated now objective of the curriculum and the needs and purpose of the student so these are the two options <coughs> I am uh, one can uh, think of now if you have objective of the curriculum in your mind, so there your aim, if you, that is your goal, then it will be a narrow uh, thinking. You will not move out of your objective of the curriculum. The correct answer for this is the need and purpose of the students. So you should understand the need and the purpose of students for making learning effective. You cannot teach a hard or you cannot teach the advanced level things to the grade 1 or grade 5 students. Uh, so based on their grade, based on their ability, their needs and what is the purpose, what is the output uh, you are expecting, based on that you have to, if that is your goal then learning will be effective. So the correct answer is the need and purpose of the student. Moving on to the next question. Next question is which of the following items of the information are important for 
important about student to motivate them for studies so uh, to motivate them for studies the learning style is important to personality of individual is important socio cultural background of every student will be different that is also important so the correct answer is all of the above so the <coughs> these inf the important information is learning style personality social cultural background now moving on to the next question if you want to improve the ability to observe so observation ability in students if you want to increase what is which of the following would you recommend so here generating interest in the subject developing the framework for experience sharpening the senses and these training mental faculties so here it is also memory based question what uh, the answer for this is training mental faculties so mental faculties are the memory observation perception reasoning will judgment so if you train all those things then the ability to observe among the children will increase so remember that mental faculties are memory observation perception reasoning will judgment now moving on to the next question which is you want to develop cooperation and team spirit in student which activity would you propose so the four activities are art debate project work and quiz so friend this four of uh, activity here art is it can be individual or it can be in uh, team but this is eliminated now three out of three debate project work and quiz the project work appears to be the correct answer as the, here you will have different task and when you have different task you have to have cooperation between them to carry out those tasks so the correct answer is project work now moving on to the 38th question is what is the purpose of research aptitude paper for candidates of ugc net set so friends the purpose is to identify and the screen candidate with scientific approach so anyway any screening agency will screen and they will identify the a uh, candidate based on the criteria that is required for that particular uh, profession so here it is to identify to identify and screen the candidates with this scientific approach next question is field study in the research is related to so friends when field study is something which is uh, related to the real life situations so generally researcher go uh, into the uh, whatever uh, research he is doing into the real life uh, situations where he can if his, his research is about economics and giving the general examination he goes in the market and study it for say some specific period now that is the uh, field study you go in the it is not something which is done in the uh, laboratory or not in the some uh, uh, experimental uh, condition so it is the real life situation so field study remember this field study is about the real life situations now moving on to the next 40th question is what is the synopsis of a research paper so friend synopsis uh, the term similar to uh, synopsis are summary abstract so uh, you can <coughs> clearly see that it is a summary of finding of the research so whenever you see synopsis it, you relate it to summary and the abstract oh, i hope you have answered this question correctly moving on to the next question which of the following proposition is not true about the research so friend this is interesting question which i have uh, included it improves the quality of teaching so friends uh, it is proved that there is no relation between the researcher uh, being a good researcher and uh, he can be a good teacher he may be a bad researcher but he can be a good teacher so there is no relation option a is ruled out now if it leads to finding of solutions so friends thing is like when you do research you will understand that uh, it's not about finding the solutions uh, not every time almost 99% you end up nowhere in the research so it is not true here only 1 or 2% people will uh, find some solution but 98% about like there is there is nothing uh, you cannot uh, like do a very path breaking research or something now that also is ruled out now the option d it contributes to the social progress of the country now see research as such is helpful the data generated by uh, research is helpful in the so, uh, in implementing the schemes but it is not directly contributing to the social progress of the country now the correct answer for this if you are a researcher you will understand it is joyful it is not a true statement research is very painstaking you have to really give your lot of time 
and you have to really <coughs> work very hard which is not really joyful sometimes you feel like you should leave the research so and uh, more often you don't enjoy it when it uh, like it it becomes painstaking but there is a joy of finding that comes after you get results but it is not joyful when <laughs> uh, you start uh, from the beginning so the not true about research is it is a joyful so it is not joyful it is a painstaking but there is some like when you have inspiration you go on doing research so the not uh, true about research is it is joyful moving on to the next question which of the following are the qualities of good researcher so friends it is uh, this is a very important question uh, first is he picks up vast area and tries to understand the minute details so this is not you when you are doing research uh, you have to find a very specific area so you remember whenever a uh, researcher works he should uh, like uh, the general guideline is you should pick the specific problem and not the vast problem see when uh, you pick a vast problem there are lot of things which can be done but for a particular researcher uh, to cover all those things it is almost equal to impossible so uh, here we can uh, option a and c can be limited as she picks up vast area that is not possible now picks up the specific area and tries to understand the basic detail so this is not correct here so she cannot uh, speak the specific area and uh, understand the basic detail then there will be no research now she picks up the specific area and tries to understand the every minute detail of that area so that is a quality of a good researcher uh, so friends i hope this is clear to you if there is some doubt you can ask in comment section now moving on to the next question the example of scientific knowledge is so option is authority of prophet or a great man so this cannot be a scientific knowledge it is say it cannot be trusted because there is no experimentation social tradition and and customs these are also not based on the scientific uh, uh, no, this thing now religious scriptures are also not scientific because see what is the scientific knowledge what do we call scientific knowledge which is, which can be reproduced and which is reliable so what is what is that thing the laboratory and field experiment which have which can be reproduced if i say something uh, there should be some proof so someone like uh, say if i say something uh, a person has to uh, for proving me wrong he has to do some experiment and if he uh, proves me wrong then it can be like okay uh, this is not a scientific knowledge it is some fake thing but when i am saying something which is reproduced and reproduced by many then it is a scientific knowledge so that can be done only in laboratory and field experiment all other options are not true here so the correct answer is the laboratory and field experiments i'm moving on to the next question a researcher selects only 10 members as a sample from the total population of 5000 and consider it good because so this is the question from the sampling so friends remember when uh, sample size is low all you need it should be a homogeneous when uh, like what is what is mean by homogeneous when i am <clears throat> from a school if i have to take a sample of the students so what should what will i do when i take some from fifth grade some from 10th grade so there will be a lot of age difference so they, that will not be the correct homogeneous size from school of say 1 lakh students if i take from only from the fifth class which has 5000 student so their age uh, their all the thinking and everything will be same so if i take from the fifth class 10 people that is the homogeneous sample for me so the for that for a researcher now this answer to this will be the population should be homogeneous so remember this when you are taking a small sample it should be homogeneous so now moving on to the next question a biblio bibliography given in a research report so option is helps those interested in further research and studying the problem from another angle and makes the report authentic option c is both a and c and d is none of the above so the bibliography friends what is it like i am uh, giving a simple uh, this thing when someone writes an article or say uh, for that matter a paragraph a simple paragraph if i write something that can be just a hypothetical thing that just came out of me and i wrote 
uh, and there is no reference given to it so what is bibliography it is a references given to the paragraph i wrote if someone want to someone is interested and in do further research there is nothing there is no bibliography so that cannot be uh, considered as authentic so if you bibliograph it when you reference it you give references so it can be it, it will help those who are interested to further research uh, to cross check those references which i have given and one more thing is when there is a reference you are actually referring them which is already reported so it makes your uh, report authentic so these are the things so the correct answer here is both a and b that is c option c question is ugc was formally established by an act of parliament in the year option a is 1961 option b is 1956 option c is 1950 and option d is 1953 so friends this is memory based question and you should know that ugc was established by an act of parliament in 1956 let us know more about ugc so ugc as i said was established by act of parliament in 1956 and it comes under the ministry of human resources and development and its functions are coordination determination and maintenance of standards of higher education in india and it provides the recognition to the university and it also uh, take care of the funds Uh, to such a recognized universities and colleges and uh, one more important thing its headquarter is in delhi and it has six regional centers in pune bhopal kolkata hyderabad guwahati and bangalore so friends remember these points question may be asked uh, on any of this point uh, the question which i asked was on the is when was it established but uh, they may also ask its headquarter where is its headquarter or they may also ask what are its function and uh, they may also ask you which uh, ministry the ugc comes under so you can prepare accordingly now next question is which of the following statements are correct about deemed university so friends uh, you uh, deemed university are also called private universities now the option a is they are established by central government option b is they are established by state government option c is they can design their own syllabus and course and d none of the above so friends uh, the uh, option a is they are established by central government when uh, it is established by central government they are called central universities like university of hyderabad like uh, du delhi universities like J J JNU so these are the uh, central universities and when they are established by state governments they are called state universities so state universities like there are uh, many states universities like kolhapur uh, shivaji university like you can have your you uh, whichever state you are residing there are many states universities they are established by the state government now the deemed university uh, they have this autonomy of having their own uh, syllabus having their own coursework in the next slide i'll tell you more about the deemed university now the correct answer is they can design their own syllabus and course so they are not established uh, by state or center they are established by either private entities or say businessmen or say ngos and now moving on to the uh, we will uh, see detail about the deemed university so let us know it the central universities or the union universities are established by act of parliament and they are under the department of higher education now state universities as i said they are established by act of local legislative assembly so uh, and there see in case of central universities they are funded by center and in case of state universities they are funded by state and private universities or deemed university as i said they are funded by the private people private in the sense they may be ngo there may be a a private businessman or whoever but for that they are approved by ugc and they can grant degrees so these are their uh, function they can grant their own degrees and but they are not allowed to have off campus colleges so this is the thing about the private or deemed university and so uh, the more functions which uh, private or deemed university is that they can design their own syllabus and coursework they can frame their own guidelines regarding the admission and fees and 
they can also grant degrees so friends remember these things about deemed university central university and state universities because uh, anything like any question can be asked like any they can tune it in other way who establishes the state universities or what are their autonomy and one more thing the in case of state universities the governor of the state is a vice chancellor and in case of state central universities the president is the vice chancellor so remember these things and in case of the deemed university the, the governor is not a vice chancellor they have their appointed vice chancellor this is one major difference that you should remember now moving on to the next question which of the following statement is correct about the nac so what is nac is national assessment and accreditation council so uh, option a is it is an autonomous institution option b is it is tasked with the responsibility of distributing funds to colleges and option c is it is located in delhi and option d is it has regional offices so friends oh, nac is not it it does not have any responsibility of distributing the funds as we studied earlier ugc has the responsibility of distributing the funds so option b is eliminated and its headquarter is located in bangalore and not in delhi remember this and it has regional offices so it it doesn't have any regional office it is it has only one office that is in bangalore so only uh, one option that is it is an autonomous institute it is correct and it is under the ugc now uh, let us know more about the nac so nac is a organization that helps in assessing and accredi accreditation of the higher education institution in india and it is an autonomous body funded by ugc and its head headquarter is in bangalore so friends these are the points that you should remember uh, in case of uh, nac so uh, there generally there will be question on either ugc nac or the other bodies of the government now friends moving on to the next question prime minister's research fellowship is for students pursuing phd program in so friends uh, last year in the year 2018 our prime minister uh, shri narendra modi ji has uh, launched this uh, pm rf fellowship so generally they said that uh, like you uh, while in the notification it was said that there will be a thousand phd fellowships and what is the important thing about this pmrf fellowship it is that fellowship uh, amount is a little higher or uh, more than what uh, generally we get uh, for doing phd in india generally people get around 28 or 25000 uh, per month but in this fellowship uh, the research scholar would like he will get 70000 for, for first two years and then it will increase to 85000 or something uh, for the next three years for his phd so this pmrf was launched but Uh, sadly the uh, when they notified it was 1000 uh, fellowships but uh, the actual result came and there were only 150 uh, candidates selected but uh, now knowing uh, the uh, going to the question prime minister research fellowship is for student pursuing phd program in which state in state and central university be central university iisc iit nit iser iits and uh, option c is iisc iits nits isers iits state and central universities and d is iits and iisc so friends the correct answer uh, to this is now they have also included the central universities after one and isers uh, after one more uh, <coughs> modification to the rule so the state university is ruled out they have not included the state universities for the pmrf fellowship so remember this the state universities are not in the uh, list where you can uh, take the, this pmrf fellowship so the correct answer for this is option b central university iisc iit nits isers and iits so friends uh, this was it in today's lecture if you have liked it and if you have some suggestions please uh, post it in comment section and if you have liked it please share like comment or